Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton and welcome to Health and Wellness. The winter break is over and so college students are headed back to school, many of them with a few extra pounds after the holiday feast. So I'm here today with my friend Daphne Oz, the author of The Dorm Room Diet, and we're gonna talk about tips for those college students Great. who are going back and needing to shed some weight or they wanna just turn over a new leaf in the new year and kind of revamp their nutritional dietary exercise plan. First of all, why did you write this book? So I wrote this book when I was a college freshman myself because I got to college a little bit overweight and realized that I wanted very badly to have going to college mark the beginning of my adult life. I wanted my adult life to be marked by healthy eating habits, healthy exercise habits. So I took my freshman year, lost 30 pounds, and was like, you know what, my peers need to benefit from this knowledge. I was about 175 pounds, and I'm five foot eight, so that's about 35 pounds overweight. Um, so I just, I still have five pounds to lose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but it's, it's um, it realistically was sort of a slow tra transition into moderation, healthy lifestyle. This is not a diet. I tried every diet in the book when I was younger and I wanted to lose weight and they don't work. This is a lifestyle program. Right. This is constant, in flux, it works with you. There's nothing out of bounds. Now, I love this. Uh, you have a saying in here that it was the dieting itself that was keeping you overweight Absolutely. before then. Absolutely. So what kinds of diets had you tried in the past? Oh my God, what hadn't I tried? I mean, you know, all the diets have merit. I, I mean, I never tried Atkins, that's one thing. But I tried South Beach, I did the Jack LaLanne, I did all the sort of high protein, low carb diets. The problem being that you know you're really good. You stick to your plan for what a week, two weeks. Right. You're working. It's not sustainable. The clock. It's totally not sustainable, and that's a big problem. I found especially, you know, I was 17, 18 years old trying to lose some pounds. These diets aren't created for my generation. They're created right. for for people who have full kitchens, who can cook for themselves, who don't have the obligation of like living in a dorm with 300 of their peers. This was, a, this was something that I noticed was a huge problem for people my age who were really trying to take back their health. What's the first tip you would give to a college student if they wanna just you know start, turn over a new page? What I would say is when you go back to school, realize that this is the start of a new year. Whatever mistakes have been made in the past couple months or weeks or whatever. Gone, they're in the past. They are in the past and you are starting a new, a new year and a new you. And what you do then is you realize, say, say you want a brownie. You don't need the whole Never. box of no. brownies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't need the whole box of brownies, and that same brownie will be available to you tomorrow and the next mm -hmm. day and next week. It's the same in the cafeteria. We, re we repeat schedules every two weeks. Right. All the same food available right. to you. Use that to incentivize yourself not to indulge every single opportunity you have. You know. So part of it is your mind. Yeah. What's the logistical part? What about literally? tree planning? Okay. It is the most important thing that I found led to my success. I kept hard fruits and soy crisps, almonds apples and, and pears with hard fruits in my dorm at all times. So that, you know, when it came to my, my 3 a.m. it was paper I had to write, right. I wasn't stuck running to the U store buying a Snickers bar. I had my, uh, my arsenal on hand. You had it ready. Right. So that's the be prepared that is part, the be prepared and, part and the advanced planning. Right. You can't talk about college without talking about a little bit of social yeah. alcohol consumption. Absolutely. How personally was that for you, and what would, what do you recommend in the book for people in terms of how do they manage that? Okay, the first of all, the motto of this book is this entire book was based on the premise of you can enjoy everything you want in moderation, and that applies to alcohol as well. When you go out to a party, you know I have something I've outlined in here called the danger zones, and going to parties right. are one of them because it's very easy to overindulge when you're surrounded by friends and you're drinking a little and you're sitting on the snack table. Make sure that you have what you feel you need, but never go excessive on it, you know? Now, you were able to do that, but do you know anyone else who was able to sure. do that, especially in college where drinking is so much a part of the culture? You know, I think, I think that everyone finds their different ways to indulge, and I think that everyone has their moments of overindulgence, but I don't think that that many people found it very difficult to find a balance there where you can, you can go out and you can enjoy yourself and have a really good time, but then you come back and you realize, you know what, like, a beer is enough, a glass of wine is enough, a shot of whatever is enough. Now, know? of course, we're talking about it just from a pure nutritional and, and caloric right. well, standpoint. Well, that's another but thing. But there's an extreme that, that I'm sure you saw in college and that, that's pretty well known out there, mm. for, and that is the people who drink a lot and then do not eat because they're doing a net calorie game. Right. And that obviously can be really dangerous. Did you really see dangerous. any of that at school? You know, I, what I did see more of was people who would starve themselves over the course of the week right. so they could binge drink on the weekends. Right. I cannot imagine the kind of agony your internal organs must be in right. as a result. And truthfully, I don't think it works that well because 
when when people get really drunk, their judgment's impaired, and more than likely mm. you'll go grab a <laughs> slice or two or six of right. pizza. So I don't really know that that equation balance works out. Right. <laughs> now, um, what are some of the other good tips in here? I mean, obviously you talk about exercise. It can be really hard to exercise in college. Absolutely. What did you find worked really well for you? Finding ways to work out without going to the gym, because I mm, interesting. hate going to now, the gym. Now, there's <laughs> most colleges have amazing gym facilities. Well, that's the one thing. That's And that's what sort of inspired me to actually get there three or four times a week was that it was free it was a beautiful facility and it was literally outside my door now, did I you never go made with friends or did you go by yourself this is these are the sort of vows I made instead of going to coffee dates with friends I would go to the gym with friends or I would take a long walk with friends I would find ways to be physically active I would walk on my errands I would take the stairs wherever possible if you see me in the airport I never walk on those little like right. roly treadmill things I'm walking and there was a rumor that you were running to classes <laughs> at Princeton I don't know if that was true yeah, but you were well, using every my, second I mean I woke up at you know like five a minutes after late. class <laughs> and then was running. Hence the running. Interval workouts, right, you know, right, it's right. all good. <laughs> so you incorporated your social life with your exercise Which I plan. find is a really good accountability measure. You know, if you have a friend who's expecting to meet you on the Stairmaster at 4 p.m., <laughs> you will be there. Whereas if you just have a goal with yourself, sometimes it takes a bit more of a cattle prod, you know. All right. Now what's coming up next for you? What's your well, next book? We have a new version of Dorm Diet coming out September 2010 mm -hmm. um, with uh, with recipes because people were like, we need, we love your tips, we need to know how to apply them, and that was sort of what I great, you know. Um, and then the next book, yes, tell me, very, do tell. No, I can't. <laughs> all right, can you give us a little hint? Well, first of all, when we'll pl we'll play 20 questions. Okay. When will it be out? Ideally by 2011, end of 2011. Okay, you're speedy, um, and right. and will it be again for the same age group? Absolutely. We're still I my my peer group is the pe are the people that I think can do the most good for this planet and that's who I will continue to address. Oh, I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to thank Daphne Oz for sharing all of her insights and motivational tips for college students and for another episode of Health and Wellness. I'm Dr. Jennifer Ashton. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, wishing you good health.